don't, don't, don't call me Superman If you haven't found my crypto What is going on YouTube? It is the Big K Cop 360 here and welcome to 2016 This is going to be a great year for my channel, a great year for tech We've got AMD Arctic Islands coming out, we've got Nvidia's bloody Pascal coming out We've got Zen potentially coming this year We've got new games coming out, we've got everything happening this year This is going to be a really really good period for the big can for you guys and hopefully my channel sees some big growth this year so kicking it off this year um amd has pretty much gone out and unveiled polaris or polaris or i'm pretty sure you say it yeah pronounce it polaris but we'll just go with that for now <clears throat> and essentially polaris is um is a name for AMD's next generation of GPUs. Like it's it's the next generation architecture. And of course it is based on GCN4 as they want, like to call it. The fourth generation of GCN. Now of course you guys might be saying Cobb stop right there. I thought it was GCN 1.1, 1.2, 1.0 or whatever. Well no, AMD never actually officially um, named GCN like that. It was kind of a thing that um you know the media did, that reporters did and it kind of just caught on. But uh, essentially, this is um, pretty much the fourth generation of JSN because we had t the Tahiti GPUs, which are 1.0. We had Hawaii, which was 1.1, Hawaii and Tonga. And then we had 1.2, which was Fiji. And of course, that's three different generations. 1.0, 1.1, 1.2. So now we're on the fourth one. So of course, they call it GCN4. Now, Polaris is pretty much, it's like the umbrella name. They're trying to like simplify the naming scheme. I mean, they've got a lot of stuff going on with like Arctic Islands and then Greenland and then Polaris. I mean, they've got so much shit going on. But I think RTG or the Radeon Technologies Group, they're really trying to simplify it. And this is just one step for it. But pretty much, this is pretty much the umbrella name for GCN4, but continuing on, um, the Polaris GPUs, or the Polaris architecture, is going to be featuring um, HBM, HBM2, and I would assume GDDR, GDDR5X, sorry, for the lower end GPUs, and of course it's going to be based on the 14 and 16 nanometer FinFET process from TSMC and Samsung with Global Foundries. Don't forget that. As I said before, Samsung is also making AMD's GPUs this year. So that is going to be some really, really good stuff. And hopefully um, AMD can get some good yields on all their silicon chips because, I mean, we saw what happened with Fiji, man. I mean, I don't know if it was supply issues. I doubt it was demand issues, but AMD had some serious supply issues with the um, Fiji chips. They just didn't have any on the market. Like, it was a shame, but I'm pretty sure with, especially with two different um, manufacturers or fabs making the chips, they'll be fine this time around. So pretty much, um, when they made this big unveil, AMD pretty much, I say pretty much so much, holy crap, I'm a bit rusty, but AMD essentially, um, they showed um, like a Polaris PCB, like a Polaris card, and it was relatively small, some are saying it was uh, less than or shorter than 12 centimeters. So, um, it's not like the big daddy Greenland GPU. It's on the smaller lower end chips and pretty much they put it up. Oh, I fucking said it again. They essentially put it up against a GTX 950, um, 1080p Star Wars Battlefront at medium settings and the cards, they said both of them hit 60 FPS. So that's good. But essentially the Polaris card pulled 88 Watts versus 150 Watts. Uh, against the uh, the NVIDIA card. Now, of course, the GTX 950, it's a pretty good card. NVIDIA tends to demolish AMD. When, okay, I'm not going to say demolish, but NVIDIA tends to be better than AMD in the power consumption uh, section. So it's good to see that Polaris here, I mean, 88 watts, that's close to half what the GTX 950 system was pulling. That's some really good stuff. So uh, AMD is clearly focusing a lot here on um, power saving, power management. Um, lowering the TDP and the total heat output of the cards. That's what they've really, really been trying to push lately. Because for now, I mean, AMD gets so much shit. The 290, the 290X, you know, the heaters. You don't need to buy a heater in winter because you got the 290X. You know, stuff like that. They're just trying to like, um, I don't know, bring their name back when it comes to power consumption and heat output. But anyway, that sounds pretty good. Hopefully, that card will be cheaper than the GTX 950. And it just goes to show that the Polaris architecture and, you know, the next generation of Arctic Islands GPUs are ready to go. And it also pretty much confirms that 
we might not be seeing a bunch of rebrands this generation. We might actually be seeing a fresh new line of GPUs because this obviously isn't the top end uh, GPU. So if we have this card competing with a 950, the 950 is kind of like low to mid end on the Nvidia range, then that should mean that far. We're getting some fresh cards, boys. I mean, a lot of people are scared about rebrands, but I don't think it's going to happen this year. I think we should be all good. So, of course, uh, AMD was saying that you'll be seeing you know, the lower-end cards launch first. So, the cards with GDDR5 RAM or GDDR5X RAM will be coming first. So, for example, I believe this card will probably have GDDR5X or just regular GDDR5. And then you have the higher cards with HBM and then HBM2. Whether AMD chooses to use HBM and HBM2 or just HBM2, I really don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if they mix it up because, of course, you don't really need um, like four, like the top four, top three cards all using HBM2. You can have HBM1, four gig cards and whatnot. But anyway, continuing on, the Polaris architecture is going to be focusing on HDMI 2.0. Uh, display port, uh, display port, sorry, 1.3, and of course these cards will have H.265 decoders and encoders up to 4K. So that's some pretty good stuff if you're into that kind of thing. I'm not really an expert in that field, but I'm just saying that for you guys. I'm just relaying you guys the information. Of course, you'll see other improvements with this arch architecture. Um, you know, tessellation improvements on the GPUs, memory compression, is typical stuff like that. It's just what you expect. It's a typical progression of GPU architecture. Now, of course, um, when we're dropping the process, the fabrication, not the fabrication process, the manufacturing process, sorry, to 14 slash 16 nanometers, it means that you can pretty much make more powerful GPUs within a smaller, smaller package, uh, less power output, less heat output and whatnot. And of course, as a result of that, AMD has gone out and said, look, you're going to be seeing console caliber performance within thin laptops. Now, of course, right now, as we know it, um, laptops, especially the thin ones, the Ultrabooks, the GPUs are flat out garbage because you just can't fit like the beefy or you can't uh, handle the beefy GPUs in those laptops. However, with this, I mean, this is going to change the game. When AMD comes out with the Zen APUs and they've got all this Polaris arch uh, architecture coming on, uh, GCN4, HBM2 stacked VRAM, it's just going to change the game completely. I mean, can you just imagine Ultrabooks with Zen APUs with the Polaris architecture having console caliber performance? I mean, this is some really promising stuff. And if this launches this year, 2016, it's going to be a great year for, I mean... <laughs> Even for laptops, I mean, another big issue with gaming laptops is power, um, power consumption, but, um, the amount of, actually, yeah, power consumption, the amount of power they use, how small of a battery you have, because regularly, um, uh, when you have, like, a GTX 980M or whatever on a laptop, you've got, like, I don't know, a few hours game time, two to three hours, because the GPU uses up so much battery, but if we have a card like this, a GPU like this, or an APU like this, where you've got lower power consumption, lower heat output, um, lower everything, then you're going to be getting longer battery times and you might be getting a rather reasonable gaming laptop in a thin package. I mean, that's some really good stuff. I'm, I'm keen for this, man. But of course, all of this won't really matter unless the price is right. If AMD comes out with like, for example, with the laptop thing that I'm talking about, if they come out with a good like Zen APU or whatever or a GPU, but the GPU costs like 500 bucks or some crap by itself. And then all up, the laptop is like $1,500, like a MacBook Pro or some crap. It's going to be irrelevant. That's just going to take away the entire point. But AMD, I mean, they're known for being, uh, I don't want to say the cheaper option, but they're known for having lower prices, essentially the cheaper option. Um, this should be good. I mean, they need to become competitive. Zen, Polaris and whatever, uh, Arctic Islands, whatever you want to call it. This is AMD's last chance, man. If they don't deliver with this, they're done. I'm telling you, man, they're done. They've got debtors to pay by 2019, man. If they don't get shit done this year, then I'd, <laughs> I don't want to say it's rest in peace, but they're going to need someone to save the hell out of them. So hopefully they can deliver, and hopefully 2016 is a good year for AMD GPU. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and the big K will see you later.